Welcome to Bethesda Church of God, a place of healing and restoration. I pray, we pray that this service will be a blessing to you. Silent 
sing it right where you are hear your voice all of my worship receive my worship sing it right where you are let your family hear you let your friends hear you here's my worship this is between you and God right now all of my worship receive my just between you and God here's my worship here's my worship all of my worship receive my worship all of my worship here is my worship oh God all of my worship receive Receive it, receive it, receive it. If you never do another thing for me, I still worship, I still worship. Receive it, here it is, my worship. Oh, all of my worship. Here it is. praise and worship we just had to God be the glory good morning Bethesda good morning family I pray everyone's doing well I'm asking you to turn your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 12 verse 7 Genesis chapter 12 verse 7 one verse and it reads the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. I'm going to read that verse again. The Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. What I want to share to you today is blessings from obedience. Blessings from obedience. Tell your neighbor, blessings from obedience. When I was a young child, my parents used a lot of bribery to get me to do things, to obey them. They promised me a long list of things if I would do as what I was told. And maybe bribery may be a wrong word to use, but in order for me to get certain things, I had to do some things. Take out the garbage, clean my room, come home on time, and also behave myself. It didn't take me long to realize that my obedience has some big payouts. I receive a, um, a little allowance. I was allowed to go places with my friends, I gained the trust of my parents. I may still have been on a tight um, leash with, with my parents, but the leash got longer and longer as I proved my obedience to their rules. The point is even in the spiritual realm. 
God offers certain blessings to Christians who demonstrate a surrender to his will. God offers every soul salvation. But salvation is only the beginning of the blessings we received. Salvation opens up a floodgate of blessings to those who continue to obey the Lord and follow his commandments. But obedience requires sacrifice. Yeah, a sacrifice of our own will to the will of God. Abraham had to make that sacrifice. He had to relinquish control of his life will to the Lord in order to get to Canaan. He had to leave his family ties and strike out on an unknown journey at the direction of the Lord. It wasn't until after Abraham got to Canaan that he realized obedience to the Lord is, is a great thing. Mm. His sacrifice paid off. There is no sacrifice we can make for the Lord that does not eventually pay out more than we put in. God's compensation plan is far better than anything we can imagine. In return, God gives all. Abraham had to give up friends and relatives to serve the Lord. But in exchange for that sacrifice, he was received into God's family circle. There is nothing like fellowship with God. We can never discount the blessing of being in the presence of the Lord. It is a choice blessing. Psalms 16 verse 11 tell us why it says, in thy presence is fullness of joy. Humanity is always searching for happiness. And when they search in the physical realm, they have little success. Why is that? Because they leave out God. Abraham chose not to leave God out of his life. Instead, he centered his life in the will of God. And as a result, he enjoyed continued fellowship with God. And one thing I could say about this church, I love when we fellowship with one another. The Bible records some very special times of fellowship between God and Abraham. The fellowship was so good that Abraham had the distinction of being called God's friend. You could read that in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 7, Isaiah 41 verse 8, and James 2 verse 23. Verse Verse 23, sorry. This kind of blessing comes only through obedience to God. Our text that we read in Genesis 12, verse 7, is only eight words long, yet it affirms some very choice blessings. That's the eight-letter word. Blessings Abraham received as a result of being in fellowship with God and obeyed his summons to go all the way to Canaan. Those choice blessings are revelation, assurance, and inheritance. Blessing number one, the revelation. Once Abraham reached Canaan, God revealed his purpose for the journey. The Lord said, unto thy seed will I give this land. Obedience has much to do with our spiritual learning. When we obey, God opens our eyes to understand his word, to learn more from him and about him. When we are disobedient, God closes our eyes and we walk in spiritual ignorance. If Abraham had ignored God and stayed in his comfort zone, he would never have been handpicked by God to become the father of many nations. The more we strive to live according to God's will, the clearer his revelation will be for our lives. If you want to know where you're headed, obey God. If you want to know the plan that God has for you, obey his word. He will give you the revelation. He will reveal your life's purpose, plan, and progress. How do I know? Because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And that's in Psalm 37, verse 23. Blessing number two, assurance. God told Abraham, unto thy seed will I give this land. Mm -hmm. Again, eight simple words that were not only a revelation, but a promise, a promise made because Abraham had done the will of God. He had followed God's GPS, not his own. Tell your neighbor, when we follow our own map, we make a mess. When we do our own thing, 
we dig ourselves into a pit. As soon as Abraham arrived in Canaan, God gave him assurance that he was right where God wanted him to be. Obedience is always accompanied by assurance. God does not leave his family hanging. His will is affirmed in due time. He will not leave you in doubt. Just obey and work the works of him that sent you. If there's a command to obey, obey it. If there's a duty to perform, perform it. If there's a habit to conquer, conquer it. Mm. If there's a direction to be taken, take it. If there's a battle to be fought, fight it. God's assurance comes in form of victory. Victory over storms. Victory over torment. Victory over weakness. Victory over heartaches. Victory over loneliness. Victory over guilt and shame. You have God's blessing assurance that you and Jesus are on the right track. Blessing number three, inheritance. Inheritance. Once again, we find another blessing in those same eight words. Unto thy seed will I give this land. Obedience brought Abram a great inheritance. It brought him the land of Canaan. This is the first time Abraham is told by God that the land of Canaan is his inheritance. God promised that it will be given to his seed. The word give appears over 1,000 times in the Bible. Many of them refer to God giving a promised land to his chosen people. Genesis 12 verse 7 is the first give where this promise is made. From that day forward, this promise to give will made in nearly 150 passages in the Old Testament. From the time of the patriarch to the time when the remnant returned from Babylonians. It even shows up in the Ten Commandments. God said, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And that's in Exodus 20 verse 12. This gift of land to Abraham's seed was a very important part of the covenant God had with Abraham. It was his inheritance today. There are many factions trying to make Abraham's inheritance their own. But the Bible makes it clear that the land belongs to Israel. For God gave it to them. The claim of all others are not valid. When God gives you something, no man can take it away. No man can stop it. They may try, but they will have to deal with God. What God gives to you, no man can stop it. I'm here to remind you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to let you know once you obey the word of God, whatever he has for you, you will receive it in due season. Ah, oh, we've got to be faithful. We've got to trust him. We've got to continue to work the work. Just, I think it was um, Thursday or Thursday, it was this past week, I was telling my wife. I was telling my wife. I said to her, I said, man, I, I just, I want to get into an extra gear when it comes to the ministry. I know that God, what God had for Bethesda is so great, but it could require faithfulness, dedication, but most importantly, obedience. Sometimes he's going to ask us to do things that will take us out of, out, out of our comfort zone. And sometimes the thing may be strange, but if God tells me I'm going to obey it. Because I don't want to miss the blessing that he has for my life. I don't want to miss the blessing that he has for this church. And I don't want you to miss your blessing. So trust the word. Trust the word. Obey the word. Trust me. You will make it to Canaan. You will make it to your promised land. I, I'm telling you. Listen. One of my former pastors says, once you obey the word, the word will work for you. Once you obey the word of God, Delroy, it will work for you. But it's not about your time. I think the problem with us church folks, we want things to happen in our time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to go through things to learn something. I'm learning day by day as we go through this pandemic. God is showing me some stuff. 
Sometimes it is uncomfortable. Sometimes you want to vent. Sometimes we do get angry because we are human. But through the venting, the crying, I've learned that, God, you're still keeping me in this pandemic. God, I, I'm not sick. God, my, my bills are still being paid. My family is well. You are keeping me. You have plans for me. And one thing I love for those, for those who, who got the COVID to hear great report how, how they overcame it. Why? Because it's not their time to go. God still have work for us to do. And while we're living on this earth, I'm here to tell you, trust in his word. Live by his word. But most importantly, be obedient. And let me say this before I close. Sometimes what God tells you, if he didn't tell you to tell someone else, don't tell the person. Why? Why will you say that, Pastor? i tell you why. Sometimes people may see a glory that's all over you. And because you tell them what the Lord told you, they would say some stuff to discourage you. Some doubt. So they put some doubt into you that it would not happen. They would get you off track. Oh, yeah. Why? Because they're jealous. Why? They don't want to see you to prosper. So I've, I, I, I'm, I'm learning when God is telling me something. If you don't tell me to tell somebody, I have to learn to keep my mouth quiet. Because in due season, I want to remain focused. I don't miss my assignment. My encouragement to you, family and friends. As we live this day by day, that God is with you. Uh, can I say that again? He is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Once you live by his word, whatever you've been praying for, in his timing, you will see it come to pass. All eyes closed, head bowed. Father God, I thank you for your wonderful blessing. I thank you for your grace. You are a wonderful father. A wonderful savior. I thank you that you have allowed us once again, God, that we can worship together. Even though we're not physically together. But God, thank God for the technology that we can still worship together. I pray for those who are listening to this sermon, God, who have, who have heard the praise of worship. I pray for those who don't know you as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that God, they will surrender their lives to you. God, you have kept them. I hope, Father God, they know that they cannot live without you. And to the believers, as we continue to live on this earth, give us the strength that we need to make it another day. Give us the strength that we need while we go to work school, in our community. Give us the strength that we need, Father God. Some of us, we are, we're facing some tough situation, but God, I'm asking you that you will give the peace that passes with all understanding. That family that is fighting a fight, God, I pray you will just intervene. You'll be the referee right now. Mm, peace to that family. Peace to that family. Whatever you're going through, peace, peace, peace. Amen, amen. Family, I love you. Now gather your, your offering, your, your, your devices. As you prepare to give online, the site will come up on the screen. And once again, on behalf of my wife, Lady Tricia, and I and the leaders of this great church, we want to say thank you for your faithfulness in your giving. I, I, I thank you. I appreciate all that you have done. I get um, um, texts and emails and calls uh, how, how certain individuals and individuals have been blessing this church with donation. We thank you. I thank you. And I pray that God will continue to bless you. And for those who are not able to give, you don't have the funds, I pray that God will continue to pour his blessing upon you. And when that time comes, you don't forget to give. But hold your offering, hold your device in confidence as I pray one last time. Father God, as we prepare to give our tithes and our offering, I thank you for the givers and those who are not able to give. Father God, as we give from our hearts, not to prove any, anything to man, but the obedience that your word tells us. God, as I always say, I imagine that you will bless this offering 
so that this offer can be a blessing to this church, so that this church can be a blessing to the city of Oakville. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Just before I pronounce the benediction, I just want you to know that Delroy Fraser and Trisha Fraser, we love you. We thank you for your prayers, your support. We pray that this ministry will continue to be a blessing to you and not just to you, but to your families and to your friends as you share this service, even to your enemies. We thank you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. God bless you. Did you enjoy this service like I did? I pray you are blessed. I pray this service brought comfort to your heart. Please follow us on Instagram at Bethesda underscore Oakville, Facebook at Bethesda Church, Feel free to send us an email at BethesdaCOG1 at gmail.com and our online giving, Bethesda Tides at BethesdaCOGOakville.ca. He will. So he'll make it all right. God is, able. God is able, whatever you need, whatever you need. He'll, supply. he'll supply, whatever is broken, whatever is broken. He, can fix it. he can fix it, no need to worry, no need to worry. He's, alive. he's alive, whole church, he'll make it all right. Get out.